What's up, this is Hannibal King. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick video here to show you guys how to do rivet mail. Um, I just learned this myself earlier this week uh, from a video I watched from Mike. Uh, showed a lot of cool techniques and, and basically got me started in this uh, and I've loved it. It's, it's a whole lot of fun. Um, so basically what my video is going to touch point on is um, basically how to start up and do rivet mail um, tonight if you wanted to. Everything I'm going to use here, you could go down to Farm and Fleet or Menards or Home Depot or anywhere like that and pick up all the tools I'm using here. <clears throat> I think everything I got here, uh, most of it I think came from Farm and Fleet. So um, you should be able to start this up tonight if you wanted to. And on a budget, if you have a lot of this stuff laying around like I did, um, you could get way inexpensive. But if you had to buy everything here and had nothing um, outside the drill, um, you could probably start this project up for about 50 bucks. Um, it's, it's not complicated and it's, it's not hard, uh, but knowing what you need and how you need it is, is the biggest step for it. So I'm going to go right into uh, what we're going to be doing. Um, this is what we're going to be making here is uh, rivet mail. And rivet mail is basically just riveted chain mail. Um, so basically, your first step is going to be you're going to have to f make your rings and then you're gonna have to flatten your rings with an overlay. Your rings are gonna come out and they're gonna be overlaid and then they're gonna be flattened. And then um, you're gonna punch a hole inside that ring. Um, and that was the most complicated part that I thought from you know before I ever did this. And then uh, uh, after I learned how simple it was, it, it wasn't that complicated. Uh, after you punch a hole in your ring, you're going to rivet your ring and um that's about it after you rivet your ring then you just start weaving them up um so i'm gonna get right into it uh and kind of explain the tools as we go so the first thing you're going to need to do is coil your stuff um i use a drill because it makes it so much freaking quicker and i love my drills and any tool that makes things quicker but you could hand coil it if you needed to. Um, but if you have a drill, use the drill. Basically, uh, use a 5 16th punch. You can get the, I get these in like 30 packs of uh, all different size punches, uh, ranging from like half inch all the way down to 1 16th. So it gives you a lot of options and sizes to do it. And it's like 13 bucks um, anywhere you go. <clears throat> or you can go uh, a longer mandrel like this and do really long pieces. I think a three foot bar of this is like two dollars or maybe four dollars at uh farm and fleet uh or menards they're just uh long steel ball uh bars basically so they come in real handy and they're real easy to use for that i like using these little ones because they make little coils you could throw 15 or 20 of these in the bowl bring them up sit on the couch watch tv and and cut them into rings uh so that's why i choose to use the the smaller mandrel over the larger one most of the time so if you put your uh your wire in your chuck there. You just pull the trigger and coil yourself up a coil. You're gonna need cutters. I use these DeWalt cutters that I get from uh, Menards as well because they're inexpensive and they work great. So after you coil yourself up a handful of these coils, We're gonna go on to step two of this. And this comes into the first really specialty tool we need. Um, these are DeWalt compound cutters. I think they're $12.99 maybe. They're not very expensive, but and they work great. First thing you're gonna need to do with these uh, as far as custom making them is grind a hole about one space of the wire you're using back. So you're gonna have the cutter spot that's gonna be able to cut the wire and then one space back where it's just a hole that you could slide your wire through. I didn't do a very good job on these because I literally made them in 30 seconds. I put them in my grinder, grinded, grinded, and called it a day. But they've worked so well, I haven't done anything else with them. So I just left them that way. Um, the reason for these is, you know what, let me take my gloves off because I hate working with gloves, but I use them when I coil because I, don't want to screw up my hands. All right. 
The reason for these is because I'm going to cut these overlapped rings. And my pliers are going to want to go over the first ring and cut the second ring. So that's why I have that notch in there. So you're just going to leave a little overlay. Everybody has their different size that they like for those. Um, some like a little wider. So and some like as tight as you could possibly could we can get. And then you just start cutting your rings. So, you know, go upstairs, sit with the wife and kids, watch some anime and cut yourself a whole bowl of rings. Um, if you just pinch and cut these, they work real great. Um, you know, you could just, if you roll them when you pinch them, they cut right off. So you can, you know, you can imagine you could probably cut a couple hundred of these in, in a half an hour. So they're not complicated at all. So that's the first step um, and your first specialty tool that you had to home make. Uh, so we're $13 into that. And uh, the coils for this uh, metal, um, I think it's seven bucks for a whole roll or four, four, I think it was like four bucks for a whole roll of this stuff. I think it was seven bucks at Menards, but I think it was like four bucks at Home Depot. So, I mean, it's really inexpensive um, and works great. Uh, so now we got all our rings cut. Uh, our next process is gonna be annealing them. <clears throat> Basically what you need to do is you need to anneal these so you can get these hot enough, um, red hot, and let them cool uh, to a nice cool room temperature, you know, uh, as slowly as possible. So the slower that these things can cool down, the better you are. Um, and what that basically does is that softens your metal. And the reason you're going to need to soften that metal is because you're going to be flattening these rings and punching holes in them. So you're going to want to want this uh, metal as soft as possible. So I just use this torch that I found under the stairs. You can get them at Menards, but... I found this one under the stairs, so it works great. So basically, I'm going to torch the living crap out of these rings. It doesn't take very long to get them red hot. I usually do them in a large uh, group. I'll do maybe like 100 rings or so. Or if I'm really you know, into it, I'll go over to my storage and my warehouse and, and throw in a big bundle of them. So basically, you're just going to get these rings red hot and then you're going to let them cool. So um, you're gonna want them to cool as slowly as possible, like I was saying. You're not gonna wanna flash cool them or you're not gonna wanna dip them in water. And actually the more that you can anneal at the same time and put into a container maybe and put a lid on it and keep some of that heat in there, uh, the better you're gonna be because the slower these rings cool, the um, better they're gonna anneal and the, the softer they're actually gonna become. <clears throat> so, okay, after our annealing process, and we got, ow, those hot rings are still hot. We're going to be uh, flattening these rings. Um, and when you anneal them, they change color. They're going to be a, a kind of a dirtier gray color opposed to like an oily, rustish type color. Uh, and you could usually just look at them and tell that they're annealed. Um, so now that we have our annealed rings, our next step is going to be flattening them. Um... I had this anvil sitting around in my basement that I was going to use. It's a cheap Harbor Freight anvil, um, and it sucks. It's such a piece of crap. I mean, it's a big paperweight. Um, I tried making, uh, hammering some rings on the face of this and just killed it. Uh, it's like a $50 anvil, so it's not like it's a big deal, but it's really not useful for anything other than the paperweight. Um, when you flatten in your rings, if you want them a little smoother, you're not going to want to use something like this. Um, but if you're wanting like some, just some really rugged orc male looking, you know, just a real rugged look where it's just beat up and really antique looking, this anvil rocks for that because it gives a different definition and a different texture in each ring. And if you're looking for that look, this thing rocks for that. I love it. And that's why I keep it around for that exact purpose because I'm actually looking for this style a lot, um, uh, in certain uh, projects, but not all projects. A lot of projects, I like them to be a little bit smoother and just a little bit cleaner. So what we had done is I picked up an $8 ball hitch. 
and it just drops right into my anvil. You don't have to have an anvil at all for this project. You can just pick up a ball hitch and honestly, you could mount it to the back of your car if you want and work out there or you could stick it, drill a hole in your workbench and stick it in there. Anything solid, you could just drop this in. It usually it comes with a big bolt. So you could put this in your workbench and just bolt it right to your workbench and this anvil will work phenomenally for doing what we're gonna do. <clears throat> so that would be our $8 anvil there that we're gonna be able to use. Um, I got this for flattening the rings. Uh, it's just a sleeve and a little, little punch that goes in the sleeves. I'm not actually even sure what these are used for. I found them at Farm and Fleet. Um, I think this was $1.99 and I think this was like $1.99 too. And they just go into each other. I ground them flat. So they work great for what I use them for. So basically, after you get your annealed rings and you got your $8 anvil and your $4 punch here, you set your rings on top of there, set your sleeve over there. Well, maybe you want to hold that. Um, and then I got a two-pound sledgehammer. You could use whatever you want. This one was real cheap at uh, uh, Menards, so that's what I'm going to use. You just set that over there and give it a good whack. And what that does is that flattens our ring up. And that's all we're trying to do. So you just slip. And I, the, another great thing I like about this ball, opposed to using uh, our anvil, I was using a small punch like this on our anvil, and I'm holding it above my rings, and I'm cracking the crap out of it with this sledgehammer. My fingers are right there, man. I'm not digging that, because I don't want to split my shit. Um, so the ball was awesome. I loved it because, one, I could wrap my hand around it, and keep so much more of my punch above where my hand was. And then when I switched to this punch, it really good because I could I could really hold that and really crack it with my sledgehammer and have a, a, a small chance of actually hitting my hand. So that's another really uh, good thing I like about that, that ball. Um, it works great. So once you start setting these up there, let me start smacking you some rings. Uh, I usually only need one smack to to get them where I want them. So you're able to run through this fairly quickly. It doesn't take a lot of time to smack down a bunch of these rings. And they, they flatten your ring out and give you a nice little flat area to punch. All right, so moving on that, now we got a bunch of flat rings. Our next step that we're gonna need and be able to do is punch a hole through these rings, which is a lot more a uh, lot simpler than it than it sounds. Um, what I came up with was I took a pair of these um, welding's plier, welders pliers, um, like five bucks. I think the most expensive I've ever seen them so far is eight, um, and they come basically shaped like this. This nose is usually really long, uh, kind of like this. I was messing around with these for a different project, but I just cut the nose off. You don't have to cut the nose off, but as long as you have a pair of these, they work great. Um, the next specialty tool, this is actually the most important part of this whole project, is this. It's a 1 16th uh, drill bit, and it's the kind that drop into your chuck or your chuckless drills, and they work great for this punch. Um, Basically, you take this drill bit and you drill right on through your pliers. Simple as that. And then you break your drill bit off and grind it flat. This becomes your punch. So not only did it make your tool, it actually helps punch your rings. Um, so when punching your rings, you're basically going to take your ring. You know, there's a hole down there. You're gonna line up that hole with your flat spot that you wanna punch your ring. You're just gonna set that in there and simple as whacking it with a hammer. And you've just punched your ring. That simple, that quick. Um, and then you just go to town punching your rings. So your little quick, simple, ring punch is you know i think the cheapest i found these things were a dollar 99 um at the the discount stores and these are about 2.99 for two of them 
Uh, they come in a two pack. Uh, actually, these ones right here. They're a Milwaukee two pack. Um, so your punch, again, really inexpensive. And there you go. So now you've punched your rings. The next step on your to-do list is to uh, fill these holes with your rivet. Um, and I found the quickest way to do that. Uh, what I do when I'm, I'm when I make my four in one, uh, I need a whole lot of already closed rings. So basically, I take my ring that I'm going to have as my closed ring, and I just take my old coils that I'm going to be using, uh, and they got a little tail from coiling them. I just set my ring right in there. And then I just set it up against there. And I use my pliers or my cutters that I've already got because it's got a little uh, notch out there. They tend to work out really nice. I just slide it up there and cut it off. So after I stick my ring on there, like I said, I just butt it up to a flat surface, slide my cutters up to it, and cut it off. So you can go through and make, you know, 200 of these, however many you need to, to do. And voila, that's that. <clears throat> All right, and the next step is going to be flattening those rivets that we just put in there. So basically, we just put in a bunch of rivets into our... Uh, rings so now we're going to need to flatten those rivets out to get this our nice little rounded out ball um, that we have on these so after it's loaded in there I what I've done is I just took my Dremel and uh, I just put a hole right there in my pliers um, a little ball that's gonna make the ball of my rivet and then I'm just going to set my pliers over that rivet and just smash them down. And now I have successfully riveted my pieces. So you can go through and just mass rivet these that you've, you know, you could mass load them and like I just showed you uh, with cutting them and then go through and mass rivet them. So after you've just gone through here and riveted a couple hundred of these and have a big old pile of them, your next step is going to be to put them together. So for that step, um, I use a pair of these uh, Empire Cutters. They come in a little two-pack with, I believe, these um, at Farm and Fleet. I think it's like seven bucks for the, the set of them. Um, they come in real handy and they're really heavy stainless steel. They work really well, um, for a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I've really tweaked on these things and they're still solid and I've cut, I want to say a couple thousand of these rivets with this and they're still nice and clean. So I, I really like them and for, you know, really inexpensive. So what, to make your rivets, what you're going to do is again, I'm going to use the cutout of my actual cutters as a gauge uh, not making gauges and not taking time in that stuff just saves time so basically i'm going to stick it in as far as my flat surface is here and just cut it and drop the rivet off and i'm just going to go do that and if you make a couple hundred of these while you're doing it um it just goes quicker like i said if you if you do each step in in groups of 100 200 then you could really start rocking and rolling Alrighty, so there you go, you, you cut all your rivets, and then basically what you're gonna do, grab out your favorite pair of plyos, you're gonna open your rings that you're gonna weave with. Like a saw. Oh, booty, I'm out of, out of rings. No, oh, there's another one. Alrighty. So the three should be enough to give you a general idea of what we're doing. So you open up your rings, and then it's really similar to your regular chain mail. You grab your ring and 
load it up like you're going to do your regular four and one weave. And once your rings are on there, I just pinch that shut. I pinch it with the back, wiggle it back and forth a little bit. And my ring's fairly uh, shut fairly well. And then you grab one of these little rivets that you'd cut off just a second ago. You stick it in there. Voila. And you take your rivet setter. You could use any pair of pliers for your rivet setter. I just really like these, so that's what I use. So now I've successfully riveted my rivet mail together. And then you just keep building this like you would your normal four and one. Um, pinch those, give it a wiggle. Grab your little rivet. I use these long ones with the point just because I have more accuracy with it. They pick up real nice and stick it right in the hole where I need it. And then you just keep setting away with your rivet setter. So if you were to make a whole bunch of these rings, um, you know, and uh, cut all your, your rivets and stuff like that, you can sit up on your couch or at your kitchen table or anything like that. You don't really need to be at a shop or a warehouse or or anywhere special. You know, I do 90% of my mail uh, on the couch. So that's why I like doing it because I get to spend time with the family while I'm doing that stuff. Watch TV or, you know, do whatever we're doing. Uh, and just stick your rivet in there again. And that's basically it, you know, I mean, now you're running your four in one pattern. Um, you could do it as large as you want. Uh, you know, just like any other chain mail pattern. And just keep on going. You know, you can make it a real big one, make a shirt out of it, do whatever you want to do. But basically, <coughs> with the, the minimalist of tools, our biggest customized stuff, our little hitch anvil, our uh, punch and our setter um, were the biggest, you know, custom tools that we made, but all were able to be made with just a simple drill and a grinder. Um, but anybody can go out and pick this stuff up at uh, Home Depot or Farm Fleet tonight and start making rivet mail and have that all done. You know, you do it in your kitchen or your or your garage or your basement or even your living room. So uh, hope this helped out somebody and hope to see you guys making some uh, rivet mail real soon. All right, thanks.